Hello, my name is Jessica Blee, AVP of Conferences and Digital Engagements at ISDE, and I'll be your host for today's session. So as you can see, we are opening this up a couple minutes early to allow everyone to come in and get settled and ensure you have a good connection before we get started right at the top of the hour. While you're waiting, we are going to go ahead and launch a poll question just so you can let us know where you're joining us from today. So the poll question is up there. Are you joining us from North America, Europe, Asia Pacific, Australia, New Zealand area, South America, Africa, or the Middle East? So we'll leave this poll up here for the next couple of minutes while we're getting settled. And then while you're getting settled, just want to let you know a couple tips for today's session. If you are experiencing any kind of bandwidth issues with sound or connection, we do recommend that you try using the phone dial-in. If you can see if we have a local number in your area, by going ahead and expanding the audio option in your GoToWebinar panel and clicking on dial-in, and that will give you all the details you need to dial in. In addition, those details are also included in the email that you use to access this webinar today. In the future, we do also recommend using a hardwired connection if, you're, if you have one available instead of a Wi-Fi, as this will provide you a better experience if you have any bandwidth issues. For today's session, <clears throat> you will get a copy of the presentation in a PDF format, as well as a link to the recording. So if you want to go ahead and watch it again or had any questions, you can go back and re-review the content. We will also be taking your questions during our panel discussion. So definitely go ahead and submit your questions via the question option in your GoToWebinar panel. And our panelists and speakers today will go ahead and address those during the Q&A. And as everyone's getting in here and settled, you'll see that we do have a poll up for you to participate in. Just to let us know where you're joining us from today to let the speakers know. Are you joining us from North America, Europe, the Asia Pac, Australia, New Zealand area? South America or Africa, the Middle East. And we'll leave this poll up for a little while longer and then we'll go ahead and get started right at the top of the hour with our session today. And then just to let everyone know as you're coming in and get in settled that uh, we do have a poll up, so go ahead and answer that. And if you're having any kind of bandwidth issues with sound or connection, we do recommend you um, dial in via the phone number that is available for GoToWebinar. Okay, so is, since it's the top of the hour, let's go ahead and show the results of the poll. So we do have a, a large por portion showing coming in from North America as well as the Asia Pacific region. So good evening to all of you and welcome. A great turnout from that region. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So hello everyone and welcome to today's extended learning webinar, Be the Next Winner of the Facility of the Year Awards. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Jessica Bleis, the AVP of Conferences and Digital Engagements at ISPE. Before we jump into our topic today, I have a few quick housekeeping items to cover. Today's webinar will be one hour and one hour for the presentation and approximately 10 to 15 minutes for questions. If you have any questions for the speakers today, please submit them throughout the presentation via the question option in your GoToWebinar control panel. We will answer as many questions as we can during the Q&A at the end. And for any questions that we're not able to get to, we will follow up with those answers. The session is being recorded and we'll show the recording as well as the PDF of the presentation 24 hours after the conclusion of the webinar. You'll have access to this content for on demand for 30 days. And then after that, you'll be able to go ahead and find it on our website on ispe.org for future reference. So let's go ahead and get started today by introducing our host, which will be Jesse Hardy, our Senior Director of Membership at ISPE. Jesse will be kicking off today's session. So Jesse, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Great, thank you, Jessica. Hello everyone and welcome to today's ISPE webinar, Be the Next Winner of the Facility of the Year Awards or otherwise known as FOIA. As Jessica mentioned, I am Jesse Hardy, ISPE Senior Director of Membership and Chapter Relations. We are really excited to have you join us today. FOIA winners set the standard for pharmaceutical facilities of the future by demonstrating excellence in facility design, construction, and operations. During the next hour, you have a front row seat to learn more about this program, the FOIA submission process, insider tips on what makes a great submission, and the 2022 categories. 
The star-studded webinar features members of the FOIA committee and FOIA judges team. Plus our panel includes three of the current 2021 FOIA winners. We are honored to have this talented lineup for you today. So to get things started, I'm going to turn this over to Dave DiProspero, Director of Pharmaceutical Process Technology at CRB and former chair of the FOIA committee. Dave? Yes, thank you, uh, Jesse, and uh, welcome everyone, and uh, happy Tuesday to you. And uh, I echo uh, Jesse's uh, introductions and uh, welcome you to this uh, interactive session. We hope that you uh, enjoy the session today and you can take away some uh, things that you may or uh, may not have known about FOIA. Uh, the session is going to be relatively uh, in informal today. Um, we'll have some brief introductions and an overview. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the uh, background and history of, uh, of the FOIA program and uh, uh, a look at the 2021 winners. Uh, Averill, the current uh, chair of the uh, FOIA committee, will talk about the actual submission process and what's required to get your project and your firm uh, up for a, an award for, uh, for the FOIA. Um, and then the interesting part of this is we're going to have a judge's perspective. Uh, the judges uh, with Tony Concoli and uh, Parag Sani will talk about what makes a great submission, what the judges are looking for, the things that they find important in submittals and in, 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 um, in projects. And uh, with all of that background, we, we hope to open it up and uh, get some questions from the, uh, from, the, from the attendees. What's important to you and what is it that, uh, that you want to hear? And uh, then we'll, uh, we'll we'll wrap things up and uh, and we'll move on from there. So that'll be the uh, that'll be the uh, the agenda today. And uh, I'd like to start with uh, some introductions. Uh, I'll start with myself again. My name is Dave DiProspero, Director of uh, Pharma Process Technology for CRB. Um, I've been involved for uh, with ISBE for just about 30 years. Uh, have been involved uh, leading numerous committees and various initiatives. And I've been involved with FOIA for just about 10. Years past chair, current steering committee member, and the, uh, the host of the banquet. And uh, with that, I'll turn to Tony. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tony Crincoli. I uh, head global engineering for Charles River Labs. Uh, I'm also the uh, judging chair for uh, FOIA for the past several years. i uh, been with ISP over 30 years, been on the FOIA committee for about 10 years. So we'll turn it over to Paula. Good morning, afternoon, uh, everybody. Paula Casalino. I'm the head of operations here for IPS uh, Integrated Project Services here in Canada. I'm happy to be on the uh, panel uh, with you all. And I had the good fortune of being a finalist in back in 2005 in the inaugural year. Um, and so it was, uh, I still remember the feeling it was very exciting times at the time. So uh, thank you for having us. Turn it over to Avril. Yeah, hi, I'm April Vermont. I'm the head of MSAT at Adviram Bio, and I'm also the program chair uh, of the committee this year. Um, Prag? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, excited to be part of the panel. Uh, I lead our capital projects portfolio for Amgen uh, in America's region. Uh, been with ISP for many years and uh, part of the Engineering Council and uh, FOIA committee for last two, uh, three years. Johannes. Uh, hi, uh, welcome all to uh, to this uh, webinar. My name is Johannes Vanderloo. Uh, I am the director of the Clinical Vector Core at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. We manufacture viral vectors for gene therapy clinical trials, adeno-associated virus and lentiviral vectors. Uh, we're very excited to be here. We've been uh, doing the manufacturing for uh, 17 years and uh, we placed a submission uh, for our brand new state-of-the-art facility at the uh, Philadelphia uh, downtown campus. And so a uh, welcome to all. John? Yes, hello, John Wichold. I'm the Vice President of Client Pharmaceutical Services at Grand River Aseptic Manufacturing. Uh, very excited to be here. I've been with Grand River for approximately 11 years. I'm responsible for the capital projects and technical transfer of new products into our facility. Uh, we are a contract manufacturer of sterile injectables. So very excited and honored to be here today. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, uh, John. 
Uh, hi, uh, good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, everyone. This is Manish Gilial, and I am vice president, vice president and uh, global head of projects in Biocon Biologics, which is one of the leading biopharmaceutical organization in in India and Asia. And uh, I have like uh, more than 25 years of experience in building uh, pharmaceutical and biopharmaceutical facilities related to biologics, uh, API devices, and you know, and uh, looking forward for this. And uh, yeah, uh, thanks everyone for joining. Well, thank you, thank you all for the uh, for the introductions, and just to kind of do a little bit of a stage setting here. Uh, Talking about the Facility of the Year Awards, uh, FOIA has, uh, has, has just indicated, it's really about recognizing, acknowledging, and awarding the best of the industry, um, the best projects that the industry has to offer within the life sciences. And the program tends to look towards innovation, quality, and cost control for, for production of products. Uh, how, do we, how do we get cost controls for, uh, for our drug products? Uh, under underhand, how do we then project delivery? How do we execute the projects? What are some of the modes of shrinking times and, and controlling budgets and uh, meeting meeting the demands? So those are those are three of the key. But again, it has become over the years really the premier uh, awards program within the industry and has gained significantly in recognition over the years and uh, is, is quite uh, an innovative program and uh, shows some great accomplishments of not just the owners of the projects, but all of the partners that are also associated with the projects, whether it's A&E firms, construction managers, equipment technology, pieces, validators, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, it's a, a very wide spanning uh, uh, award program. The winners clearly over the years have spanned the globe. Uh, we have recognized 115 winners uh, in, fit in 20 different countries. Um, projects that are both small and large and uh, firms that are both small and large. So there is no one size fits all. Uh, it is a, a very diverse, uh, diverse selection process and it's a very uh, diverse um, uh, submission process. Over the years, uh, this year, we, uh, we recognized uh, several uh, winners in categories. And uh, Abra will talk about how the categories work. I just wanna take one second and recognize these firms, Takeda, Elevate Bio, Janssen Sciences, Takeda Pharma, uh, GPO, Gilead, Graham River, uh, Biocon, uh, Locust, and uh, Raymond Perlman. And uh, again, we're fortunate enough to have three of this year's winners on this panel who, uh, when we get into the panel discussions, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about what they believe were important for their submittals and uh, what has gotten them to a category award. We kind of look back a little bit over the years. Uh, the first, uh, the first award that was uh, that was issued was in 2005, and that was to uh, Novo Nordisk in Sweden. Uh, they had what was called the uh, De Novo Seven project, and it was about a 143 million dollar facility expansion project that set the stage for uh, for FOIA as we've gone on. And over the years, the uh, the award winners have been an impressive group. And uh, last year, we acknowledged and recognized uh, Sanofi, Sanofi in uh, Framingham, Massachusetts for their facility of the uh, future uh, for digitally enabled integrated continuous biomanufacturing. So again, uh, over the years, we've, uh, we, we've seen a, a great, great selection of uh, organizations who uh, have raised that trophy and uh, have gotten the bragging rights for what they've done for, uh, for their project effort. And uh, with that, I'd like to uh, turn it over to Averill and uh, have her talk a little bit about what does it now take to get things uh, submitted and, uh, and put in front of the judges. So, Averill, over to you. Yeah, thanks, Dave. So, let's see. Um, the first thing I'd like to bring up is that the program committee is separate from the judges, and it's similar to other volunteer committees where we execute on the vision for the four-year program. I'd also like to highlight that FOIA is a program that is active all year, even though you hear about the winners for six to eight months out of the year, 
there's things going on in the background, including uh, updates to our submission process, categories, and um, the judging uh, of the actual projects. So we recognize the category of winners usually in the spring. Um, this year we announced those last or in April. Um, and then we will recognize them hopefully in person this fall at annual meeting and then announce the overall winner. The submission process is open right now. The package was released last week. So as you're listening to some of these stories of other winners and thinking about the projects that you're involved in, I hope you'll be inspired to check that out. Um, the submission package is available on our website and um, the submission deadline for 2022 winners is in November. So one common question is what type of projects can be awarded for facility of the year? And we do have the following requirements. Um, we're really looking for special and unique projects uh, to recognize, but this can be new greenfield builds, uh, expansions, retrofits, and renovations. And again, the submissions are open now, and I will tell you a little bit about the submission requirements. These are the sections of the submission and all sections are required to be filled out to be considered. Um, I also want to highlight that this year we've added a new section based on feedback from ISP International Board, which is number six, the sustainability efforts of each project. So we want to see projects that not only in, in, uh, include innovation and process and other technologies, but also um, include innovation and sustainability. We're making changes to the FOIA categories. I think over time there's been a little bit of movement in these categories, um, but we really saw an opportunity here to align with ISP's overall strategic initiatives and modernize uh, with our categories. So going forward, we will have five main categories centered on innovation, operations, supply chain, pharma 4.0, and social impact. Now that doesn't mean that we will only award five projects. We're introducing a subcategory under each main category. And this is really to eliminate the ties that we've had in the past and also eliminate honorable mentions. So that means that all category winners will be eligible for the overall winner consideration. This also allows flexibility to award more than one subcategory under a main category and to set, specify the area of excellence that each project demonstrates. It gives the judges a little bit more flexibility in how they award and what they recognize. And it also allows for some um, category, subcategory winners in areas which are relevant to the times, such as COVID-19 response that we saw this year. I'm sure we'll get lots of questions about categories and subcategories over the next few months. And this is definitely an area where you should reach out to the program committee and um, you know, ask us questions about that. So with that, I will turn this over to Tony and Parag to talk about a judge's perspective. Oh, thank you, April. So good morning. Tony, ready? Yep, we're good. So uh, welcome, everyone. So a, a little bit on, on the judges. Uh, I, I like to mention this uh, at the award uh, ceremonies every year in that it's really a diverse group of industry professionals. Uh, they're diverse geographically. 
uh, all over the world from Asia, US, Europe. Uh, they are diverse from background. So they're not just engineers. We've got supply chain professionals. We've got quality professionals, manufacturing professionals. Uh, when we talk about uh, a facility, uh, it, it's really the entire process of getting uh, that product from development in, into uh, supply chain. Uh, so the, we're fortunate enough that we've got uh, about 20 uh, leaders that are chosen uh, every year uh, through both the uh, committee and uh, final approval by the uh, board of directors. So uh, we've got several who have been with us since the beginning of the program. Uh, about 15 years ago, uh, and we look every year, you know, to make the pool a little bit more diverse. So judges are looking at uh, winning elements from every perspective, uh, their own perspective, the business, uh, the patients, uh, essentially the, the entire uh, the, the entire uh, process of, of building and, and bringing innovative uh, innovation to the business. Uh, Brock, I don't know if you want to add anything else. No, I think you 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 hit it hit it right on, right? And I think as 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 personally, I have been uh, part of this judging committee over the last you know two three years. There has been even you know mark shift in in how some of these submissions are coming. So some of these things that we will talk about, you know, what winning makes an entry. So I think as the industry is adapting and as ISPE is uh, you know setting up new guidelines and new uh, framework for innovation, sustainability, and other things. Uh, we do see a definite evolution in the process. And, and it's really, personally, from a, my perspective, as a judge's perspective, it's a very rewarding exercise. There's a lot of reading, uh, depending on how many submissions we get. Uh, but it, it's really an enriching experience to be a judge in this process. It's, it's phenomenal to see what the industry peers are doing, how the innovation is happening, how project execution uh, is evolving to you know, enable uh, us, why we are here is to serve, you know, different serve patients and uh, provide medicines to uh, the uh, people we serve, our companies serve. It's really a rewarding uh, process to be part of the, uh, this judging process and, and read through some of these submissions. Good, so, okay. So you said it in, in uh, a nutshell, right? So what makes a winning entry? Uh, in, in the end, it comes down to what is innovative, right? What an improvement, um, uh, something that's novel in execution. We, we get a lot of submissions, and I always say they're, all of them are great submissions, uh, but what really, really makes them stand out? Um, and in the end, it's what's new, right? And that's what innovation is all about, and taking a, a technology and applying it in a different uh, fashion, taking uh, a new approach to an execution method. Uh, it's taking technology that's even off the shelf and applying it in, in a different way. Some very, very, very clever uh, things that we've seen. And, and that's really, you know, in the end, what makes a, a winning entry. Uh, we, we love to see things uh, about OPEX and lean execution, right? I mean, it, it's about bringing costs down. It's about making products more accessible. Uh, it's about improving the uh, quality that we see. And overall, the impact to not just uh, the business and the markets, but also to the planet, right? So sustainability, uh, and when we refer to sustainability, we're really talking about the uh, entire process, not just energy. When we, when we say sustainability, it's not just waste stream, but what do we do in terms of sustaining the products in the market, uh, bringing them to uh, areas uh, of the world that have been that haven't had the same market access, for instance. Uh, we've taken a, a very different uh, approach to these in, in recent years. Uh, I'll say early on, it was about building a great facility. Now it's really about making a great product and how do you get a great product to the, the most people most effectively at the lowest cost. Um, but as it goes with any uh, project, right, it, it comes down to making sure projects executed uh, around right scope, around right cost, around the right schedule, and that's executed safely. Um, and overall, it, it's about uh, collaboration, uh, team performance, and those really come out in, in some of the descriptions that, that we see. Um, I don't know, you wanna add anything, Prog? 
No, I think I just want to build upon what you said about sustainability, right? So I think one of the honorable mentions last year was uh, was a company that picked up a product that was for HIV treatment. Uh, the original company actually stop making it for financial reasons. And the other company then chose to actually pick up that product, invest significant amount of uh, money and capital into that project to actually enable uh, them, them to deliver that product for the a much needed treatment. So I think that, that just shows uh, you know, that not their focus only on building the project sustainability, but also sustainably supplying, uh, supplying to the marketplace. Um, we, oftentimes we're seeing, you know, maybe there's two biologic drug substance facilities that are submitted and really the digital innovation and, and how vertically integrated a factory is from design construction on to the operate, operability uh, consideration, uh, you know, using, a, using different digital tools could be, uh, you know, one of the, one of the factors that uh, helps the submission stand out. Good. That's good. Let's go to the next slide. So what are we looking for? Okay, bottom line, is it innovative? Is, is it clever? And the, this line here, we've seen it all before. We have seen it all before. Um, and you know, often we'll, we'll get, it's a, it's a you know, fantastic project, and they are. They're all good projects, but really what makes them different, right? You know, we, we've seen every office collaboration project. We've seen uh, every, um, uh, large project execution. We've seen uh, every new sterile manufacturing suites. And it's not that they're not great projects, they're all good projects, but really what makes them unique and stand out. And often they're very subtle and uh, minor things that have a huge, huge impact. The ability to manufacture across multiple platforms, uh, the, the ability to integrate uh, digital technology and uh, bring uh, products uh, to, to areas that they weren't able to bring before, modularity. Uh, is it really a step change, right? That, that's really what we're looking for. Is it a step change? And, and often it, it isn't a really high tech solution. So often it's a very, very simple solution. And those are the ones we actually love the most, believe it or not, because it shows how you can bring uh, innovation in real small steps to uh, a simple project or to a complex project, and you really, really have a huge impact. So in terms of time, cost, quality, and safety, uh, of course, that those are givens, right? I mean, it has to be well executed, uh, but often we'll, we'll hear, well, you know, every billion dollar project that gets submitted wins. And actually, actually it's not the case. Uh, and in fact, more often than not, when we look at the large projects, we look at it with a very discerning eye because we know that the large projects have a lot of resources. We know the large projects can you know, do a lot of uh, clever and different things, but are they really stand out or is it just another large build out? Uh, again, very necessary, very, very needed uh, projects. But overall, what, what are we doing to the industry to advance uh, technology innovation? And in the end, that's what ISP does, right? I mean, we're, we're here to kind of benchmark around technology and innovation. And so what will the industry learn? Yeah, and in fact, last two years in a row, we've had billion dollar project submissions that did not win. Uh, the FOIA award. Yeah. Okay, go to the next slide. Yeah. So, trends. So, what have we seen, right? And uh, I, I think the awards kind of speak for themselves, right? When they tell us what we're seeing in, in the marketplace and in the industry. Uh, again, automated solutions, a lot of uh, uh, great technical uh, digital. Uh, innovation, uh, a lot of machine visioning, a lot of data mining, a lot of uh, the ability to make products better, faster, simpler, um, all through the use of automation. Um, a lot of BIM around uh, the design of facilities uh, going very, very deep, right? Not, not just what we think of in terms of BIM, but literally integrating execution of the project, maintenance of the project, uh, down to uh, resources. Uh, new technologies that we've seen are around um, uh, 3D modeling, uh, new uh, 
that we new designs that we've seen are around flexibility. Uh, a lot of modularization, a lot of modularization. And, and I, I guess the interesting thing about modularization is now that's almost become a, a theme of its own, right? And how do you modularize? Do you, you know, is a single standalone? Is it uh, combining into a larger facility? Is it skids? Is it uh, facilities? Uh, but, you know, those little subtle things that change and, and make a step change into the next year, those are really things we look for. So, yeah, we may have seen a modular application, but the next modular application is actually a step beyond it. We've seen high containment. The next level of containment is a step beyond that. We've seen uh, the ability uh, to implement OPEX through single use. Uh, and again, it's not just in what you know no, most of us would normally think of, of single use, but throughout uh, the process or throughout the, the, the uh, life cycle of the equipment. But again, I, I think we, we come down again to what we call sustainability. And, it, and again, yes, it is what we normally think of sustainability is energy, waste reduction, uh, efficiency, but also about getting products uh, to other parts of the world safely, efficiently, efficiently and, and with the right quality. Uh, big, big focus, uh, especially today with uh, all the new therapies and, um, and products that we're seeing uh, in the marketplace. Frog, anything else on trends? No, I think just to add on the, the, the first bullet here, right, it's just the data mining. We've seen a lot of trends on projects enabling the factories to afford data visualization and data democratization. Uh, so, so, you know, by driving some of these things that Tony mentioned, you know, integrated BIM, uh, electronic batch records, and the vertical integration of different systems is what we see uh, companies and, and the projects are enabling their factories uh, to be more uh, visual uh, and, and easier for folks operating it on a day-to-day -day basis. Good. So, what do you say we go to the panel? I'll ask the uh, panelists to turn the cameras on, turn their audio on, and we'll join. Welcome. So maybe Jess, if you could remind uh, all the attendees if they'd like to submit a question. Sure, absolutely, everyone. So all of the everyone that's attending, if you'd like to submit any questions for the speakers or the panelists on today's session, go ahead and do that via your GoToWebinar control panel. You'll see an option for questions. Just go ahead and submit them in here, and we have access to them here, and we'll address them during the Q&A part. Over to you, Tony. Okay, so I guess I'm, I'm moderating here. Okay, we got we got a, a couple questions that came in. Uh, first one uh, is, what is BIM? I guess it's more around uh, the technology than the FOIA, but uh, Prague, maybe you can answer that one. Sure, so BIM basically it's a short form for uh, building information management, right? So it's a 3D tool. It started in the industry when architects and engineers would design the facilities in 3D space that eventually then the contractor world, the, the constructor world took over uh, and started using for uh, class detections, you know, field verifications, things like that. And now the companies are aspiring to go even, even further. Five, you know, you may hear this terminology is 4D, 5D, 6D, 7D. So it's essentially developing the entire project design in this 3D design world, uh, including, you know, right from the concept phase, so you can visualize the project as it goes along and, and all the data, all the in, you know, instrument IDs, tags, all of that gets built as part of that 3D model. So when you actually turn this thing over, you have a, a working 3D model of a facility that your maintenance technicians can go in, look at a particular thing, pull up the asset ID, it's integrated with your work plans, it's your maintenance plans, calibration plans. It's, it's, it's really, evolving and, re and, and revolutionizing how the projects are being built. Anybody else uh, from the panel wants to add anything to it? Yeah. Okay, so let's see, let me go to the next question. Um, 
question around sustainability. So there's a question that, that asks, if a project does not have any sustainability efforts, will it not be considered? Um, Avril, is that something you can answer? Yeah, sure. So um, that might have come up from the new requirement in the submission to state, uh, make some statements on your sustainability efforts. And this really was um, a decision that the program took based on feedback from previous projects, um, as well as the international board, and how strongly uh, ISPE is trying to support sustainability. So at face value, I just kind of take that as like, yeah, if, if you don't have any efforts um, and can't submit those statements, then that will be a uh, disqualification on the submission. But what I would challenge people to do is really think about that. And I'd be surprised if a modern day project doesn't have some, some sustainability built into it, whether it's a certification for your building systems or um, you know how you're managing uh, construction site waste or the future operation um, of your facility. So I wouldn't be discouraged to submit because of that. I would just you know think creatively about what your projects are doing and, and make sure that you can explain all those efforts. Okay, and there was a follow-up question which asks, is it applicable only to manufacturing or to R&D? And the answer obviously is to all projects, so. Yeah. Okay. Um, Got had a question on any advantage to submitting for more than one category. Um, Brock, this is something we get every year. Yeah, and, and and we don't see any disadvantage or advantage of submitting in any particular category. If you feel strongly about you know one of the categories that you want to submit in, certainly it should be highlighted clearly through your process. But I think more than that, as Tony mentioned, the submission is really a storytelling opportunity for the overall life cycle of how the facility was built. Uh, and in the process, I think uh, those eight, uh, the mandatory, I think eight uh, uh, sections that Everell mentioned at the beginning of the session that we look for, for folks to, you know, complete, uh, to be considered a complete certification. If you're really focusing on those areas and, and covering those high level uh, sections that we're asking, you know, the safety performance, safety considerations, uh, sustainability, those elements, I think the, a, a clear winner or a clear submission stands out uh, by that way on how the story is narrated. And oftentimes, uh, we see projects submitted for more than two, three categories, uh, and oftentimes they end up actually getting uh, recognized for something else that was not even submitted for. So, so we don't see any distinct advantage or disadvantage. It's it's really focusing on how you executed the project uh, and narrating that story within the framework that ISV Guide has provided. Good. Okay, I got a. Actually, I got a question. Uh, it's really related to facility qualification and uh, it's about monitoring drains and a great deal. It seems more of a technical question, but Johannes, you, you want to try this one? Uh, uh, sure. So, so it's kind of a broad question, right, about uh, facility um, uh, qualification. And uh, I think what um, um, we've been involved in, in actually several facilities uh, where we usually everything resolves, revolves around the validation master plan, right? Before you write the validation master plan, generally you sit down with the entire group of stakeholders and you do a very comprehensive risk assessment of everything associated with potential risks related to the site where you're at, um, uh, the building that you're in, um, the associated risks of the environment around, and and really pull all the plugs and identify what are the risks and that in a way drives uh, the uh, sort of the background against which you write the validation master plan once you write the validation master plan um, you look at all your equipment and you list it all out the, 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 the portable the, and the fixed equipment the facility uh, and you do an impact assessment um, and um, identify which of those have a direct impact or an indirect impact, uh, and that drives the validation, your, I, your IQ, your OQ, your PQ. 
um, you write user requirement specifications for all of your equipment. Uh, and um, we generally use uh, like a comprehensive uh, approach um, that leverages factory acceptance testing and site acceptance testing within the validation strategy. So long answer to a really short question is how do you do you know, facility qualification? I think it's a comprehensive approach. Um, and, um, and one of the tips that we could give you uh, is that once you have your basic plan together of your facility and your approach to validation, talk to the FDA, have an interact meeting, and talk with, the, with your, your local regulator, FDA for US obviously, but a regulator for, of where you are, and, and make sure you discuss your approach to not only your design, but also your validation and give the regulator a chance to object and give you some tips for things that if you'd build it without talking to them, you wouldn't be able to change. So I think that's uh, that's my answer to your sort of short question about facility validation is a comprehensive approach. And again, um, and ne then, never miss the opportunity to uh, answer even a technical question. <laughs> Thank you, John. You asked about um, D, grade D, right, uh, Tony? And uh, yeah brains and things i think the the answer to that second question is embedded in my my first answer is that it's a comprehensive risk assessment and so it really depends on what the risk would be of your drains uh, we use a relatively minimalistic approach to the to the monitoring of the grade d environment based on our process and our risks but that may be different for your facility so i'm going to leave it at that good thank you Okay, is there any limit for minimum project cost or timeline completion? Is there any criteria set? Dave, maybe you could take this one? Yeah, I could take that. And, uh, I think, again, the short answer to that is no, no there is not. So you, you could be building a greenfield facility or you can be renovating a suite in an existing facility. It could be a large project, small project. It could take three years or it could take six months. Um, again, the, the the idea is what have you done on that project that stands out, makes it interesting, makes it innovative, has done something that, as Tony said, is a stair step. So, uh, answer is no. There are no timeline or dollar requirements for a uh, for a submit. Good, thank you. Okay, interesting one. Uh, obviously, the the world was very different the, this past year. So, it's, would a COVID related response proposal be of interest to FOIA. Um, well, I'll tell you what, Paula, since you've obviously won, um, but maybe you can give a perspective on this. Sorry, that was, uh, you said me? Yes, please. Just, to, you know, please. what would you think of a COVID submission? Yeah, I mean, COVID's been a hot topic, uh, as you all know, for the last uh, 18 months or so. So, and there's been a lot of great work um, with many clients um, in this in the space. And I think it'd be a great opportunity um, to uh, bring those uh, projects forward. There's been a lot of innovation and, in, you know, working in warp speed um, to bring some of the uh, products to market. So um i think absolutely submit those projects there is i'm sure ample opportunity uh, for facility of the year awesome okay next question who typically leads the submission effort the owner the architect the contractor how important is involvement from others such as the specialty contra contractors consultants etc so who ultimately is responsible for submitting uh manesh maybe you can give an, uh, some feedback based on your experience yeah, I think uh, uh, thanks, Tony, and it's a very good question. Uh, so ultimately, it, it you know boils down to you know what you want to present you know in terms of uh, the various kind of categories which are there in the project. And so uh, I, I don't think it matters whether uh, you you do it in house or kind of you use your design consultant or you use your your kind of CNQ consultant. The, the the important thing is right right. To, uh, to see, go through your projects and see under various categories, like what have you done, which which will kind of uh, is something where, wherein you, you can kind of have done something which is extraordinary or something which is different uh, and, and then try to summarize the, that thing. 
uh, whether you can as i said like uh, it doesn't matter you know I, as far as submission is there to be submitted by yourself or, or the design consultant or or, or or even you know that would not you know kind of matter i hope that you know answers your question but you know in case i want further you know you, you can obviously refer the isp website it's it's given very you know kind of uh, clearly there you know in, in this kind of guidance yeah uh, and, and thank, thank you manish uh, the most important uh condition is that when the submission is you know being handed over to isp we want to make sure that the owners have full buy-in in that submission yes. we've seen uh, architects lead uh, you know construction managers lead or collaborate with the team or sometimes just the owner do the submission but it's most important that the company uh, which is the re recipient or beneficiary of the project has to agree and has to buy in on submitting the project for FOIA consideration you know and I, I completely agree with that especially if you're uh, you have a submission that's very um, that's different. That's not a cookie cutter manufacturing. That's a very specialized area, and and so very close collaboration between the owner, which I am the owner of our facility, and the architects and engineers is is crucial. Where throughout the entire process, we worked very intensely and directly with the uh, Ballinger Architects and Engineers, is our, our the firm that we worked with in the Philadelphia. And I believe it's crucial to the success not only of the project but also of the submission. Excellent. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think the efforts can be from anybody else, but yeah, I mean, uh, the the owner of the of the project, I mean, they are the one who have to kind of submit it. I mean, maybe. Yeah. Good, thank you. So I got a, I got an interesting question here. It's like, how do you convince your management to support a FOIA submission? Right. So this is. It's a lot of work. Obviously, we've been through them all, right? It's a lot of legal reviews. It's a, a lot of effort and then getting leadership to uh, it. So, so, so John, maybe I could ask your perspective, right? You know, this was new for, for you. And how did you go about getting leadership support for it? Well, I don't know about, you know, everybody's situation is probably different from company to company. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure about that. But, uh, you know, for our company, you know, being a contract manufacturer, it's, it's a marketing effort for us too. So getting our leadership to approve it uh, wasn't, uh, wasn't an issue. Um, it was something that we wanted to also share with the entire team. This, this award is not only um, just for the sponsors, but everybody that worked on the project. It's a, it, it's a great reward for everybody. You know, everybody that worked all the way down to the validation team, the, the people that brought the facility up, it's, uh, it's, it's an accomplishment that everybody needs to be rewarded for um, for working on the project, and so it was a, a really easy decision for you know for our company and the executives at our company. They wanted to reward everybody for it, so we're pretty happy about that. And uh, um, we also wanted to make sure we uh, acknowledged all of the contractors we worked with, the AD firm, and you know, and all the subcontractors that worked on the project. Uh, so. Um, like I said, I don't know what every other company is like, but for us, it was uh, it was um, not hard at all to get our management uh, uh, to agree to this. Cool. That, you know, so actually, while we're at it, may, maybe let me ask you just around the uh, around the, the table. So, uh, Johannes, what was it like submitting? Was, you know, was management uh, supportive? Ultimately, they were, but did it take any convincing? You know, they, um, they they required some convincing indeed. Um, we are a hospital, Children's Hospital Philadelphia, a non-profit organization. And uh, as such, we have to be very careful uh, with respect to uh, really submitting or promoting anything. Um, and so I, I think the message I would like to uh, give uh, the, uh, the viewers of the of this webinar is that don't underestimate the legal review and don't underestimate the marketing team's review. And so we had to go through multiple, multiple rounds. And especially if you have a large organization uh, like ours with over 15,000 employees, um, there are departments that all have a stick. And so um, you need to go through all those departments and make sure you get all the right permission. So the short answer is that, uh, that we welcomed the opportunity to have our facility highlighted, uh, while our intent is not, and the work that we do is not 
uh, for profit. Uh, obviously, uh, we are very proud of what we do, and uh, and like I said, we uh, we welcome that. But at the same time, you need to make sure you carve out time for the legal and and marketing sides of the equation. Oh, thank you. And, and Manesh, maybe you can add some feedback. Yeah, so uh, I mean, again, it's a, it's a good question. As far as uh, you know, management support is there. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, that's something uh, we never had any issue. And to be very frank, uh, you know, kind of we missed on some of the projects earlier because of uh, timelines of validation and in a regulatory approval and in a kind of you know facility ready for commercial use. And also, uh, I mean, it's it's a great platform to kind of uh, see like what you have done and in terms of you know what's the uh, I mean, what 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 are the current standards, and you can learn from you know a lot of other submissions previously as well. Uh, but like you know, uh, I think I agree that you know once you submit, uh, it's a, it's it's a process in which you know there are obviously a lot of exchanges between uh, in in terms of your your corporate communications and your legal and all because you have to submit quite a good amount of you know kind of data and so. Uh, but yeah, we never had an issue. We were you know kind of uh, encouraged always by you know kind of uh, to to kind of get into this kind of you know submissions and i as, as i already said in fact we missed some of the submissions earlier uh so yeah i hope this answers the question oh, thank you thank you okay another question came in and this is our small scale highly innovative facilities say 3000 square foot eligible so maybe paula maybe if you could address that Yes, of course. Um, you know, all sizes of projects from small to large, as long as there's innovation and you meet the uh, criteria as identified by uh, April earlier in this presentation, um, you absolutely go ahead and submit. Good. Okay. Next question. Is there a distinction between requirements for GMP versus non-GMP or early clinical in terms of what's required? Uh, Prague, maybe you want to take this one. We've seen everything from an R&D lab all the way to a full-scale commercial manufacturing facility. So I think, again, as long as you are able to highlight and clearly articulate the criteria against which these projects are being assessed, uh, we've seen it all. We saw a clinical facility last year win uh, execution award or facility integration award. Um, the, the Gilead project this year was an R&D lab. Um, that may, uh, made to honorable mention. So we've seen it. We've seen it all. <laughs> and then I got actually I got a follow up uh, question, Prague. Uh, it's is it possible to win for a category that they did not specifically explicitly apply to? Uh, it has happened on handful of time, at least in in my tenure uh, on the FOIA committee, because. The, the story was so compelling that it actually made judges ask the question, hey, can they be considered for more than what they have submitted for or something different they have submitted for? So, uh, it, yes, it has happened. Okay. So, got an interesting question here on the visual presentation in the submission. Um, so, so, one of them, one part of the question is around the evaluation uh, for the judges. And, and I guess what we generally say is, we like short submissions. We like get to the point, you know, show us what, what's good about it. Um, but I, I will say there's an element of, of visual submissions that give us an understanding, right? So in, in the end, it's about giving us, the, the judges, an understanding what's ac actually there. So yeah, there, there is uh, an importance around uh, proper amount of graphics. So may, maybe I'll ask the, the submitters, uh, maybe John, if you could say, you know, how did you go about putting it together in terms of what you wanted in terms of graphics? Well, we worked very closely with our A and E firm. Um, they were they were really close, and and they had a team that uh, had done this before, and uh, so they helped us and guided us through the process. They were excellent at that. We provided all the technical information, did all the reviews, the pictures, um, but they had a great format. Um, they actually gave us a couple of different choices. Um, and we were able to choose the one as a team and, and work through that. And uh, I think that was really helpful to us. We had never submitted uh, for a award like this before. So um, I'd, I'd recommend taking um, as much advice and help as you can get from people that are familiar with it already. But uh, that's what worked for us. 
<laughs> okay, interesting one. Uh, can I get? So Tony, can I just jump on, on <laughs> one thing? Right, I think one thing we definitely ask for is there are certain pieces of information that we're asking in submission, like the facility square footage, the dollars, dollar values. We're not asking for, you know, at detail work breakdown level uh, details on your cost. Uh, but when it comes to comparing the two projects, if one project has provided that information and the other project has not, it becomes a little bit challenging to judge because you don't know where the parity is or isn't. And then it takes some amount of back and forth. And I think this is where the earlier question about management buy-in comes in super, uh, becomes super important is that what is, how much of information is management willing to share? Uh, so, so just be cognizant and mindful of that. We do ask a number of hours worked, what was the safety performance, you know, TRIR at the end of the project, financials of the projects. So those are some of the things we consider as table stake for us to be able to effectively compare and judge projects against one another. Good. Okay, good. another interesting question. This is a good one. Avril, maybe you can answer this one. It says, can I get a sample document for submission for FOIA? So it looks like, you know, what what should a FOIA submission look like? Not the not what we see, right? The winning uh, presentation, but you know, what about a sample? Yeah, I'm not aware of a sample, nor do I think we could give out in previous winners a submission document. But if you go under isp.org and look under programs and select facility of the year awards, um, you'll find the submit your facility link and that's where our submission package is. Um, it is very detailed in terms of instructions and, and suggestions and also includes the form that you need to fill out as well as descriptions around uh, the content that goes into a submission. So if you go there and find that and you still have a question please contact the program committee and we can help uh, add more detail to that and april i think one thing i would add to that is uh, take a look at previous winners on the at least the descriptions that are on the uh, the, the foia website and the publicity because those descriptions are in essence taken from the submittals uh, maybe not verbatim from the submittals but that is the basis of that so a, a look at the write-up on a winning project will at least give you some indication of, of how that might fit into your uh, into your submittal and I, so i got we got time for one more question uh I, interesting one here what happens to the submissions and the data after it's submitted so uh may, maybe i'll answer this one so again everything that's submitted is confidential uh we companies can determine what will be published you know they, they got a final review of what you see when, when the awards are made uh it remains with ispe it does not get distributed to anyone it does not get sold it's not that that type of information um uh, so in, in terms of confidentiality in terms of being concerned what happens to that data it, it rests with with the judges it's it is essentially uh, uh dissolved you know after the fact and I guess the other follow-up question to this was how many submissions do we get? So last year, and Dave, Avril, maybe you can confirm it. We, we got over 30 submissions, if I, if I remember correctly. I, I, think, I think it was 30, 32 this past year. It's it's ranged. I think we've we've seen from the 20s to I think 30 is pretty high. I think we that's that's a that's a record year, but in that 25-ish range is is not uncommon. Okay. So I guess, well, we ran a little bit late. Of course, I'm looking at my my green screen here. <laughs> so why don't I turn it over to uh, Jess and, and Dave to wrap up. Great, thanks, Tony. So I, I guess uh, before I turn it over to, oh, go ahead, Jess, I think this piece is yours. No problem. Um, it was a great panel. Um, I hope everyone learned a lot. I just, you know, few parting words, definitely, as we mentioned, um, go to the website. It's gonna have all the information that you need. You can absolutely, if there's any questions you have, you can, there's contact information to reach out to myself and then uh, the program committee. We can get your questions answered. 
Um, also want to make sure that we, you all are aware that on October 31st, we will be planning to celebrate the 2021 winners at in part of our ISPE annual meeting in Boston, Massachusetts. So it's going to be a great celebration. Uh, there'll be more to come on that, on how you can get involved. Um, and then just know that, you know, we will have the slides and recording of this webinar available to everyone. And I just wanted to personally thank our FOIA um, committee and judges and the winners today that really, uh, that made this webinar possible. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Justin. Uh, again, to, to add to that, the, uh, the the banquet that we have, and this year it will be face-to-face -face again, so that's terrific. Um, that's an opportunity to, uh, to, to celebrate and um, have all of the, the winners and their partners uh, attend a very uh, fun and informal banquet, accept the rewards formally. In addition to that, at the annual meeting, there will also be a poster session. So all of the winners will have posters of their projects. There will be an educational session. You'll be able to hear from the winners. They'll talk about their projects. Of course, we mentioned the banquet, and then there will be uh, on um, the, the members' breakfast. That's when the big award is announced, and the overall winner will accept their uh, their award. Um, yep. I think. In, in, in closing, just one additional thing I'd like to add, um, the submittals, um, as much as there's an importance of wanting to win on that submittal and you're, you're taking the time and putting the effort because you'd like to win an award, but if you step back from that, the process of documenting your project effort and the submittal package that you ultimately put together really goes well beyond the submittal to ISPE. I think it's a tool that you can use internally within your organizations. Um, to kind of put put that project on the shelf and, and highlight that, use the submittal for internal purposes and use the submittal for the next project that you're going to execute. This is what we did on this project that we believe was worthy of an award. Well, how do we lear, learn from this to now do our next? So there's uh, there's certainly much more beyond uh, beyond just the submittal. And personally, I've been involved in submittals that have not been awarded, and uh, it's disappointing, but it is also a, a worthwhile task. So I think with that, I will also share my thank you to the to the panel and to my colleagues and uh, wish everyone a, a great day. Great, thanks Dave, and really good point. It is, it's a great process to go through to document your projects. Well, thank right. you, Jesse and Dave for wrapping us up today and thank you to all of our speakers and panelists and to all of you for joining us. As we wrap this session today, I'd like to remind you that a recording and a presentation PDF will be sent to you via email 24 hours after the webinar today. With the link, you'll have access to the content for 30 days, and then it'll be moved over to the ISPE.org website for future reference. Instructions on how to access the PDF will also be included in the email. If you enjoyed today's session, we have a full webinar calendar on a variety of topics, including complimentary, extended learning, and on-demand webinar sessions available on our website at ispe.org slash webinars. As always, ISP strives to be here for your professional needs. Make the most of your membership by catching up in our communities of practice, past webinars, blogs, pharmaceutical engineering magazine articles, or study a new or classic guidance document, all part of being an ISPE member. To find these resources or information on how to join ISPE, if you're not a member, please visit us at ispe.org. And finally, we appreciate your feedback on today's session, as well as your ideas for upcoming topics and areas for improvement. A survey will be available at the conclusion of today's session and in the email you receive tomorrow. Please take a couple of moments to complete the survey, as we do value your feedback. Also, once again, everyone, thank you for joining us today. We hope that everyone enjoyed this session, and we will see you at our next webinar. Thanks, Dave and Jesse. Bye, Bye, thank you.